Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn easy-to-implement tips on how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award-winning professional organizer and coach, Julie also shares suggestions to help you live clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Soothe your soul with our customized aromatherapy blends designed to support you in clearing clutter. Our unique blends include Space Clearing, Zen Mind, Serenity, Awareness, Natural Awakening, Loving Kindness, Gratitude, Forgiveness, Blissful Balance, and Present Time, which will become your favorite. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about space clearing. If you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you know I talk about all areas of clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. I'm adding a fifth category of energetic clutter today. I've been talking about it for a while, and when I was asked about it in an interview, I decided I needed to add this area to the podcast. Look for different ways to clear energetic clutter in upcoming episodes. And if you're listening to the podcast, remember that this is also made in video because we're going to have a little bit of show and tell today. I introduced energetic clutter in my fall cleaning podcast and want to go more in depth here about clearing the energy in your space. Most people have probably heard the expression, the tension was so thick you could cut it with a knife. That's energetic clutter. You can feel it, and it doesn't feel good. Have you ever walked into a room right after an argument? You can feel the tension. It doesn't feel good, and you most likely don't want to stay in that room. I participated in a program called Leadership Raleigh that was a program through our local chamber. One of our days we spent at the county jail. There is a moratorium on the death penalty in North Carolina, but we toured the death chamber area. It took all my willpower to not burst into tears because you could feel a range of negative emotions in that area. Talk about a place that needed a good space clearing. Now your space might not be that bad, but you can tell the difference when you walk into the room and how it feels. As I mentioned in the fall cleaning podcast, get to know your house. How does each room in your house feel? Does it feel good? Does the energy feel light and happy or stuck and heavy? Do you tend to gravitate towards one room over others? How does that room feel? Go around and do an energetic clutter check for each room and start becoming familiar with what it feels like. Now, there are different ways you can do it. I simply sit in the room with my eyes closed and start to tune into the room. Check it out, see how it feels. I also tend to feel energy through my hands. So I will open up my hands, open up my palms and kind of feel and comb my hands through and feel how the energy is feeling. If it feels heavy or stuck, again, you don't even need to do anything that complicated. A lot of times if you just sit still, you will really tune in and know how that room feels. If you found some rooms that feel stuck, here are some ways you can clear that energetic clutter. Experiment with a few of these and find what's right for you. You can use sage. Here is a big smudge sage stick that I have. It's from New Mexico that someone brought back for me. You can find it online. My partner Rachel Seavey and I sell them with our aromatherapy collections and essential oils. What you do is you light the stick and you smudge the room. So it's going to light and, and it will fall off and you'll see kind of the orange ember and then it'll start to smoke. And what you simply, this is what I do. So you go around the room and smudge stick to clear the energy. I also like to use a seashell. I like bringing nature into elements when I can. So for instance, I have this seashell that I have when I lived in California and a teeny sage stick. So what I will do is light it and then I use the seashell to collect any embers so it doesn't get the room dirty and it can catch the ashes.
Now, it's been my personal experience that it doesn't matter where you start. Again, feng shui experts, energy experts might disagree, but I'm just going to let you know what's worked for me. I haven't found a difference going clockwise or counterclockwise. What's important, I found, is to make sure that you get everywhere, such as in corners, because that's where stagnant energy can really collect in your closets. Don't forget those areas under your beds. If anything feels really stuck, spend more time on it. Another option besides a sage stick, you can use essential oils. You can put drops in a spritzer with purified water and spritz the room. Or again, if you can bring in nature, I like to take a flower and lightly dip it in water. Again, I will use my seashell here because I like bringing in as much nature as possible. And you can lightly dip the flower into the water and essential oil mixture and just flick some drops around the room. Rachel CV and I have created formulas specifically for releasing clutter, and you can find out more on my website at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Another way to clear energy is to use sound. There's crystal bowls. I have a Tibetan singing bowl, and here's how this works. I'm not so great at it. I need to practice more, but people who are really good can get the sound to keep going. But I have a Tibetan singing bowl. Again, you can get a crystal bowls. Remember, everything is energy, and sound is a great way to disrupt patterns. When I find myself starting to eat emotionally, I use sound to break it up. You can also simply use your hands and clap out. Go in those corners. Clap out that negative energy. You can use ocean water. I've hauled some back from the beach before. Or create your own with water and salt. And use a flower or some other form of nature to cleanse the room. Dab the flower in the salt mixture and lightly go around the room shaking out the water. Another thing I do is I envision draining all of the energy out of the room. And again, this is something that's really great if you're not going to sage, but doing this to clear the energy on a regular basis. I stand in the room and I see four golden roses anchoring the top of the room and four golden roses anchoring the bottom of the room. I believe the rose is a universal symbol of love. After I have my roses in place, I imagine gold cords connecting all the roses. So the four top roses all connect, and the four bottom rose connect, roses connect. Then the top and bottom roses connect. I use my hands to drain the energy in the room. What I do is I lift my hands up, and I'm envisioning the top of the room, and moving my hands down, literally draining the room. I do this several times until I feel the energy is clean. Again, simply bringing my hands down, envisioning, pushing out all the current energy that's there. And I envision it draining down the cords. I connect the cords to the earth and just envision all of that energy draining down all the cords that connected and into the earth to be reused again. When I am done with it, I fill, simply fill the room with golden light. And if there's an intention that I want, I do that as well. When I'm doing any of these space clearings, I focus on what I want to release, maybe it's negative energy, sadness, stuck energy, whatever, from the room. After I've cleared the cluttered energy, I also take up time to fill up the room. I think of my intention for the space and what I want to bring into it and envision that room to be. Before I move in anywhere and after I leave a place, I do a thorough space clearing. It allows me to set the intention if I am moving in and if I'm leaving, have closure and leave a clean slate for new people moving in. You may want to consider doing the same. People ask me how often they should clear their space. I say whenever it doesn't feel good. We have a cat sitter for Joey who stays here when we go on vacation. She always tells me how much she appreciates it because our house feels so good and loving. It's because I regularly clean the space, set the intention, and we're careful about whom we let in our home. This is something that can make a huge difference in your space, and I encourage you to try it. Energetic clutter can have just as much as an effect on us as any other kind of clutter. All right, everyone, do some space clearing and clear some energetic clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Soothe your soul with our customized aromatherapy blends designed to support you in clearing clutter. Our unique blends include Space Clearing, Zen Mind, Serenity, Awareness, Natural Awakening, 
loving kindness, gratitude, forgiveness, blissful balance, and present time. Which will become your favorite? Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of 10 Clutter-Free Living Tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's coaching, ebooks, online monthly decluttering classes, how to organize your life, office hours, and her unique clutter-free living mastermind at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You can also watch all episodes on YouTube or download on iTunes and more. Join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.